Hello, today I'm going to show you the Fremencio valve in valve cover workup with the trifecta surgical valve. So, this is a 19 millimeter trifecta valve, it's a very small valve, and you can see that signature here on the actual screen. So, again, similar to what we've done before in prior sessions, I'm going to line up the open red circle on the bottom left panel with one of the commercial poles. I'm going to put a dot on the top left panel. On there. So next, I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise again to the right sinus and put a dot at the base. I'm going to do that again to the non. And then now you have your free dot. So now I have to clean this up. First, I'm going to go to the top of the ascending aorta. Remember, you don't need all these measurements here. In fact, you want to be able to do a center line measurement to make sure that your coaxial to the surgical valve, not the native anatomy, because otherwise your dimensions of measurements is gonna be a little bit off. Sometimes might not be perfect, so you have to be uh, keep that in mind, but we try to do that as, as much as possible to try to Make it cool. So the other thing is, remember, these surgical valves sometimes are deformed or, or distorted, so would be potentially more difficult to actually measure. So okay, so now I'm going to go back to the analyst. You can see it's not quite at the center, so I'm going to try to look at this. You want to be at the bottom of the frame. You can see that here. I'm going to go up and down to see where it is at the bottom. And you want to be relatively symmetric here. So you can see this one is a little bit off. With surgical valve, typically it would be more like a 120 degrees apart in terms of the measurements here. So you can see this is pretty good. Aim. It might is sometimes not easy to be make it perfect, but this is kind of the coaxial to the surgical valve that I was talking about. So once it's done, I'm going to click confirm, and then here is the root anatomy. I'm going to compress this. And then you can now use the lasso tool to trace out the inner diameter of the trifecta valve. Now it's gonna be small. I think it's around 17. If you look at the mini bipods valve and valve app, you can see it's almost like 16, between 16 and 17. Now you can drop the gain. Remember there's some booming artifacts sometimes with these uh, valves. So you can actually try to make sure you're a bit more so you do not underestimate the dimension of the valve. And the trifecta, remember it cannot be fracturable, it can be remodeled and stretched. So that's something to keep in mind as well in terms of your virtual circle being placed. So it's pretty close to, close to uh, 17 here. So very small surgical valve. And you see this is uh, going to save it now in terms of the annular report. And then I'm going to the LVOT. Again, standard surgical valves is not an issue uh, unless you try to fracture or use a homograph. And see that here is LVOT now in terms of conduction system impeachments or potential LVOT injury. Next, I'm gonna go up to the STJ. You can see this patient is a very small root. I'm gonna use the open circle to kind of swing around. And you can see here, it's basically 10 millimeters height of the sinuses. And when you go to the LV left main, you can see that here. So I use the ruler times two, and I'm gonna measure the STJ which is again, pretty small, 23, 24. 
Now you can see that here, the left mean is very low. It's almost at the base of the annulus. That's possible, especially in small aortic root because uh, of the supraannular position of the surgical valve. So you can see the left mean height is like one. And then you can see the left sinus height is 6.3. So it's a very small surgical valve. This particular trifecta will clearly rise above to the sun above to the sinotypic junction. And you can actually see that here, even though the surgical valve is not that high, you can see I'm actually going all the way up to this. I'm going to do a custom link measurement to go down to the annulus or the height of the trifecta valve is taller than this, but we are measuring it right around the valve frame at the bottom rather than going a little bit below that. And see that here. So again, do the same thing, right click, custom link measurement. This is just so that you, the numbers at the bottom that doesn't up block your height here. Now remember, this is gonna be putting in either 20 millimeter balloon expandable valve or a 23 millimeter self-expanding valve. So the what's the Ways of that, and that's around 20. So the leaflets out in the frame and let it go, please expand outward in the outflow. So you might want to be mindful of that. And I'm going to just to put almost 20 millimeters. If you think about that's going to be really what might expand to potentially when it. So you can see why. This could be a problem with corner obstruction. See? Now, thankfully, this patient has coronary bypass uh, supplying all territory, so it's less of an issue. So, just out of interest, I'm going to just put 18 millimeter here. And also remember, this is a externally mounted pericardial. Well, wow, meaning the pericardial tissue is wrapped outside the frame, not inside the frame. So again, the leaflet deflection, and especially if the leaflets are thickened, you can see that leaflet here is going to be even more likely to obstruct the coronary. So now let's measure the VT STJ because the coronary is so low. So you're going to go from this here to here. And then also that's the distance supplying the coronary. But you also want to make sure how much of the flow here on the top of the valve. And we'll fine tune that in a moment. So you can see this is the frame. I'm going to put a, you're drawing the ellipse. I'm going to draw a 18 millimeter circle kind of in between 17 ID and 20 millimeter being maximum expanded. And I'm going to then show the how it fits relatively root anatomy. You can actually see the leaflet here pretty well. One thing that I've learned with valve in valve workout is that you, if your end systole imaging is suboptimal in terms of quality, you can use the end diastolic imaging because then you can actually see the leaflet quite well. And you can see that here. And that's also an option for you as well. So when that's done, you can see this is the STJ actually. I'm going to save that now while I have time. And then you actually, I didn't do a sinus or salva but you can see it's a very small sinuses to this. So I go from the commissural pose across, commissural pose across, and commissural pose across the non, very, very effaced sinuses, 22, 23 millimeters only. Twenty millimeters on here. So you can see this patient has a very small sinuses. I'll save that right now. 
Now in terms of the VTSTJ and VTC, so this is VTSTJ because already it's the right sinus. So you can see with the eight millimeter dimension, I'm facing the left main. You can see the distance here. You can also see the distance here of a VTC, the right coronary, really only around 2.1 millimeter. So very, very narrow. Thank goodness this patient has a all graphs or patent. So we're not as worried about native coronary obstruction. So you can see that here, this is the left sinus height. This is the left main height. This is the virtual valve to the STJ. And this is top of the valve of the trifecta valve. I also measure here to see the clearance because sometimes this is looks tight, but you can also measure this distance because there will be sinus flow around this area, because it's not just one dimension. Okay, so I'm going to go to the left, right quantity now, do the same thing. You can see that here. You can also do the same kind of reconstruction here like this. And you can see that here, I'm gonna do another 18 millimeter. Okay, and this is maybe a little overestimated, but you know, when you pre-dilate, post-dilate these files, sometimes these frames will stretch. So you can see that here. Going at this height, this is really the, what you need to worry about is this flow here. And I'm getting around 2.4. Obviously, this you can see is less on the top because of the asymmetry. One point nine to two point four. So that's the this that's the area that you're gonna have diastolic flow to the right corner. So I'm gonna put a save this here. You can see the right corner height. It's way around there. Five point eight millimeters also low. So you can see that this is kind of what I would measure. Rarely I do the right, but you can see this is a very small root. So let's look at the ascending aorta. Again, this is not segmented properly. I'm going to skip that. You can see that this is the trifecta valve at the hockey puck view. And then now you can see, I'm going to drop the gain a little bit. You can see that how it looks on the fluoroscopic view here. So that's the base. And I'm going to use the angle to to do that, we'll save this now. And so you can see this is kind of a coplanar view. You can line up the, the commissural pulse of this, and this looks pretty good actually. So you can do coplanar. And then if you want to look at the left main clearance on floral and on angio, you line up the two dots of two commissural pulse and one, so the two one view, and you put a pigtail again or the uh, coronary catheter and a semi-selective short to see how the left main will look. So that's what we call LAO view, LAO cranial, typically, as you see here. And of course, the cuss overlap view that you saw in native anatomy, you can also determine that here on the RAO projection. So let's uh, take a look at the report that's been generated. You can see similar kind of layout in the as in the other videos that are shown, I'm going to move this VTC measurement down from here. 
And you can see more measurements here because it's a small wood and you want to look at quarry obstruction. Like I said, this patient would have needed uh, a silica or leaflet management strategy uh, to for both actually to be able to avoid quarry obstruction if this patient does not have prior uh, revascularization. So it's very important to note that here. So this is what it looks like, and you can save it and share it with your heart team. And of course, you can also save the session as well. So I hope this is helpful in terms of looking at uh, how to do a premensal workout with valve valve tabber with a trifecta valve. Uh, trifecta valve tends to have the external pericardial mounted, tissue mounted valve, so the leaflet obstruction risk is actually higher because it's externally mounted. So be extra careful, particularly if you use balloon expandable valve that can further stretch the valve uh, at the outflow and all, even the self-expanding valve because this particular valve is only 19 millimeters. So I hope this is helpful and we'll see you next time.